Well, thank you, Stephen. Thank you for uh, organising this event uh, today on what is a, a very uh, important occasion as we look at the future of work and how we can create a society where work is fair. Uh, we know that since it was established in 2014, the Public Policy Institute for Wales uh, has become an important and valued part of our public policy landscape here in Wales, and the centre, of course, is carrying that work uh, forward. We know how important it is to have people who can provide ideas for government that are outside of government, and to make sure that government is able to have a reliable source of researched work as government takes forward policies and, indeed, laws. So can I first of all begin my contribution by putting on record my appreciation to Steve and his team for the work they've done over the last three and a half years and to wish them good luck for the exciting plans I know they have for the future. Because we know it's very clear from reading this report that work and the future of the labour market present some of the biggest and most pressing policy challenges for governments and policy makers at all levels over the coming decade and more. Two generations ago, work for most of the men in my family involved the cage, the face and the winding house, because most of them were minors. And for them, it appeared that the world would never change. The colliery still employed many, many people, and it appeared that the work, tough though it was, would continue for many years in the future. Uh, last week, uh, I went through a cabinet in my office in Cate's Park and found in there the Wales Report 1965, published by the Wales office. And in that report, it talked about the future and it talked about how robust the mining industry would be in the years going forward, how steel was going to expand, all the things that we know that didn't happen. Which is why it's so important that we start to think about the future now and to look at what needs to be done to create the kind of uh, positive future that we want for our people. So the report lays out very clearly the economic, environmental, technological and demographic, demographic forces impacting on Welsh businesses, on jobs and on our communities. In particular, it captures quite well, I think, the increasing pace and scale of that change. Change happening not just here in Wales, but across the world, not isolated from the rest of the world. We know that. And just looking at some of the forecasts in the report of the way technology is fundamentally reshaping key industries and services, we soon understand that these are forces and opportunities that need attention now if we're going to ensure that Wales is able to not just withstand, but take advantage of the future that will unfold before us. And the report makes many things clear. We know that digitization and the convergence of technologies are rapidly accelerating developments in artificial intelligence. We know machine learning and precision automation is transforming all forms of manufacturing. New autonomous vehicles will radically alter the way we transport ourselves and goods around our economy. And of course, there are challenges there for the insurance industry. How do you quantify risk if vehicles are autonomous? We know that we can see estimates for the number and type of jobs that are likely to be at risk of automation in the UK. And that estimate sees 9 to 35% of jobs potentially at risk. But we also know that artificial intelligence could add up to £654 billion to the UK economy by 2035. It's been said before, but it's worth saying it again. This is a fourth industrial revolution. Now, while the precise impact on individuals, jobs and work might be difficult to predict, there's no doubt that these disruptive forces, and disruptive these days, it seems to me, has acquired some kind of strange positive connotation, will change, shift, destroy and create jobs. And we need to better understand that landscape and better integrate that learning into the planning we do as a government to understand how all this is changing the very nature of work, and that's what this report can help us do. It's important because on every measure, work matters. Work is the foundation stone upon which we build our economy and through which we build prosperity for ourselves, for our communities, our businesses and for our families. Work, when it's good, when it's fair, helps to give dignity and meaning to our lives. And that's why we've put jobs 
and growth at the heart of our work as a Welsh Government over the last few years. We've put the protection and creation of good quality jobs at the heart of successive budgets and policies. It was the reason why we stepped in last year to save our steel industry and the communities around them from collapse. It was at the centre of our decision to support Aston Martin and TVR to come to Wales and to bring new jobs and investment to our communities. And it's been at the heart of our response to Brexit from the very start. There can't be any viable future for our country outside the EU if it's not one grounded in jobs. As a Welsh Government, we made better jobs closer to home the centrepiece of our programme for government following the elections in May 2016. And just this morning, we were able to announce that Welsh Government capital funding will support the Incopro to create 80 new jobs to expand into new offices in Caerphilly before the end of the year. And that funding will allow the company to take advantage of new opportunities opening up in brand protection to track criminals online and to remove sellers of counterfeit products from the internet. An example of how we're supporting firms to create good quality employment in industries with a future. And of course, we need to understand the changing patterns of work, the challenges and opportunities of new technologies, the ways in which we have to respond using our devolved powers in Wales to tackle the insecurities of work that unfortunately stalk too many workers and their communities. And last year, I announced that the Welsh Government would take a lead in this area. I committed us to taking a deep and serious look at the changing nature of work, at how our programmes and policies in Wales needed to adapt in response to the gathering forces in our economy, many of which are captured in this report. I was proud to state our ambition that this government wants to make Wales a fair work nation and to commit to that through our policies and through our actions. And we need to give meaning, of course, and substance to that pledge. And that work is being led through the established social partnership structures we have in Welsh Government with trades unions and businesses. The Fair Work Board we've established, being led by Julie James, has made good progress over the last few months, both in defining the meaning of fair work. It's one thing to have a concept, but it has to be defined very carefully. And in identifying the levers by which we can increase the availability of it across Wales. And I know today's report has been shared with board members and is being considered carefully by them. And the output of their work will be fundamental in helping us to respond to those challenges and opportunities. Now, earlier this year, we published the first statutory future trends report for Wales. What is that? Well, it's a document that demonstrates one of the clear and tangible ways in which the new Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, passed by the Assembly in 2015, is actively shaping and influencing policy in Wales. It provides us with an important evidence base that can help us plan, think through, and future-proof our policy in the coming years. Three questions. Firstly, how will changing trends in the labour market impact on the future of social care in coming years? Secondly, what are the important skills we need to teach our young children for the economy of tomorrow? And thirdly, what are the skills gaps that we have and we have to fill if we want to build the infrastructure of tomorrow. And those questions require the collection of intelligent data. And it's important that that is the foundation of a joined up policy response. Now, none of this is easy, of course. Nobody really can predict with 100% accuracy what the world will hold in the future, as that 1965 report demonstrated all these years on. But our small size as a nation our collective commitment to fairness and the growing set of legislative powers we have in Wales give us the opportunity for creativity and innovation in responding to the possible futures, plural, laid out in the report. Now, one of the most important strategic decisions we've taken as a Welsh Government in recent months is to acknowledge that there's no silver bullet solution to many of the economic, environmental and demographic challenges captured in the report and which we will face 
over the coming years. There's no single skills programme, no new funding pot, and no new piece of infrastructure that can, of themselves, insulate us from what is to come. It's no use having a reliable, sustainable transport system if there are no jobs at the end of the new railway line. It's no use for either the community or for business if an industry of the future is supported to grow in an area where individuals don't have the skills that can enable them to be employed in that industry. There will always be stunted economic growth if a regional economy is buoyant, but young people can't get on the housing ladder. And that's why we published recently the National Strategy, Prosperity for All, a single overarching national strategy that can help us to address many of the big challenges and opportunities in this report. A whole government approach that can help us to create a more competitive and fairer economy and one that can increase both our wealth and our well-being. Now, I am as aware as anybody else in this room that a strategy is not enough of itself. We cannot be simply a strategy factory, which is why it's hugely important that what people see in Prosperity for All is translated into what they see in their everyday lives. I am as aware of that as anybody and this document and this strategy will lead to improvements, particularly in terms of developing a more targeted and joined up approach. We know that the multi-layered forces impacting on our politics and our economy require us as policymakers to develop a proper cross-cutting, cross-government approach. Now, as the report makes clear, the dynamism and the scale of the changes in the workplace mean governments should focus clearly on education and skills, fostering the development of transferable skills such as creativity and critical thinking, as well as developing new skills for the digital economy. We want to develop a curriculum for the future that uh, takes us to our goal of developing young people who have achieved in four particular areas. Firstly, we want ambitious, capable learners ready to learn throughout their lives. Secondly, enterprising, creative contributors ready to play a full part in life and work. Thirdly, ethical, informed citizens of Wales and the world. And fourthly, healthy, confident individuals ready to lead fulfilling lives as valued members of society. We accepted the recommendations in the Donaldson Review and the new curriculum will begin to roll out from 2022. And that work is being supplemented with additional funding in those key areas where we know we need to do more. We know, for example, that we want to encourage more young people to learn coding, which is why we put £1.3 million uh, to one side to help set up new coding clubs in Welsh schools. We know there are currently around 1.5 million jobs in the digital sector in the UK, 400,000 of which involve coding. It's a sector that will see 100,000 new coding jobs open up by 2020. Our five-year plan, slightly Stalinist there in terms of its uh, description, but our five-year plan alongside new investment will help people get the opportunities and crucially the confidence that they need to get involved in coding because we know that those digital skills will, be, will grow in importance over the next few years and beyond. Now, coding for me, when I did computer studies in school, involved machine code. If any of you remember that from years ago, you remember how frustrating machine code was. You got one number wrong and the program wouldn't work. It's apparently more sophisticated now. But certainly we know it's a skill that's going to be needed for the future. But of course, we have to focus on those already in the labour market as well, because the world is changing around them. The, the day when you got a job and you stuck in that job for the rest of your life, those days are gone for many, many people, an increasing number. And we know that opportunity must be there for people throughout their lives because we know that having a job is the most effective individual driver of poverty reduction. And while unemployment is now lower in Wales than it is across the rest of the UK, which in itself, if I'd said that 20 years ago, people wouldn't have believed, we know that our economic inactivity rates are still too high. There are people who want to work and who could work with the right support who aren't getting that support at the moment, and we need to make sure that they do in the future. <clears throat> for those in need of support to get back into the work, from the youngster uh, who has, at that moment in their lives, little work experience, to the individual with health problems who hasn't worked for five years, it can be confusing to navigate the plethora of different programmes and providers out there. 
So the new employability plan we've committed to developing seeks to address these issues and to help individuals retain and progress within employment by making that process simpler. By working with partners, our new Working Wales programme, which will be up and running by 2018, will be designed to create that simpler single point of access for those looking for work and to help them to find the right level of training or employment intervention that suits them. And we know that that can have benefits for everyone, whether it's in terms of our national prosperity and getting more people back to work, whether it's in terms of tackling economic activity, whether it's for businesses in helping them to gain access to the skills and people they need to grow their firms. And of course, for individuals in setting them along a path that can lead them to a better job and a better life for their family. But this is not about creating any old job. That was the approach of 25 years ago. We know that it's important to get a, a foot on the ladder, but we're talking here about creating good work, helping people to progress in their careers. And as the report makes clear, our focus has to be on extending opportunities for progression through employment and not just through getting a job. People need to feel fulfilled. The more fulfilled people are, the more productive they are, in my view. And that means we have to ensure that there are sufficient opportunities for lifelong learning, whether it's through retraining or in-work training, to ensure there are opportunities, of course, for people to see that progression at all ages. It's why we've committed during this assembly term to creating 100,000 all-age apprenticeships. We know that people need help and need retraining at different points in their lives. I'm proud, I have to say, of the partnership approach that we have with businesses in Wales. Uh, we've provided investment and assistance that has supported 185,000 jobs in all parts of the uh, country. Just this morning, we celebrated the fact that more than 2,000 jobs across Wales have now been created as a result of support from our Accelerated Growth Programme, innovative support for growing companies in growing sectors. But even here, there's something more for us to do because the report lays out clearly the detrimental impact on health and well-being caused by precarious work and low pay. At the time of the Brexit referendum last year, many people decided to vote for Brexit, not because of anything to do with Europe, but because they felt that they were undervalued. I lost count of the number of people who said to me on the doorstep, this is my opportunity to register my protest because I remember, and I was talking to people in Labour Vale about this, they would say to me, I remember my father in the steelworks or in the mines, it was hard work, but it was well paid, it was secure, there was a pension at the end of it. I, on the other hand, have two jobs. I'm on a zero hours contract, I've got no pension. Somebody's to blame for this, and this is my opportunity to register my annoyance. There are too many people out there who are in work, but the fact they are in work doesn't mean they're in satisfactory work or that they feel secure. And it's creating that security that's, that's the challenge for us in the future, because we know that instability and insecurity of work leads to increased stress and anxiety. We know that mental health problems in the UK cost employers, employers alone, almost 35 billion pounds last year, and that's employers. And one of the important features of Prosperity for All is that mental health is now one of the five cross-departmental commitments that we've agreed to take forward as a government. So it's not the responsibility of one minister alone, it's the responsibility of the entire government. We have a shared duty to ensure that improving mental health runs through all of the policies of this government. But of course, one of the key challenges that we have is to understand what levers that we have in Wales that can create the kind of positive change or disruptive change, according to what vocabulary you want to use, for the future. What incentives do we have to drive the cultural change in organisations so that we can ensure that together we are readying our communities, our economy and our people for the changes to work that are coming. As I've said, the Fair Work Board we've set up will be outlining the results of that, their work in the coming weeks and through Prosperity for All, we've indicated our intent to utilise every tool at our disposal to shape the future here in Wales. And a key mechanism we'll be using to do this is our new Economic Action Plan that we'll be publishing later this autumn. What is it? Well, the plan uh, will demonstrate how the government as a whole 
can work to grow our economy while spreading opportunity and promoting well-being. And a key element of the plan will be the implementation of a new economic contract that can define the future relationship between the Welsh Government, business and others as partners for inclusive growth. It will provide a new framework for understanding the <coughs> respective roles we have in growing the Welsh economy and, importantly, the responsibilities of each in delivering on shared objectives. And it will set out clearly that if you benefit from public funding, then you have a responsibility and an opportunity to demonstrate how, in return, you are future-proofing your organisation for the coming challenges, that you're demonstrating how you are making your organisation more productive or decarbonising your business for the future. And it'll set out the role that you can play in delivering our ambition of making <coughs> Wales a fair work nation or in improving workplace mental health. I'm drawn to the end of my contribution. At that point, people's heads start to rise, thinking at last. Because the real value of today comes in the discussions that will be held during the course of this event and the contributions of others here today. But I hope I've made clear, as this report also does, that whatever the future looks like and however work changes in the Welsh economy of the future, we can only prepare for that future collectively. We cannot do it alone as a government. We need to work with others to make sure that we're all ready for the challenges that are coming. Working together, making sure it's not a race to the bottom, that's hugely important but by working collaboratively and creatively to build fairness into the structures of our economy. So thank you for your time today. I can't join you for much longer, I'm afraid, so apologies for that, but I know uh, that the event today will be hugely important. And we shouldn't undervalue uh, how important today's event is, because in the next five, ten years, as the world of work changes, people will ask the question, what was done? to identify those challenges and opportunities at the earliest possible stage. Today is part of that. The report is part of it. Today's event is part of it. Working together, we can be ready for whatever the world throws at us. That's the challenge uh, for us, and that's what today is all about. Facing up to the future, making sure business is prepared, making sure our people are prepared, making sure government is prepared. We do that by working together, and the future can be a bright one for Wales. Thank you. Thank you.